Um, is Fomo really present in Wuthering Waves? I, I, for me, I, obviously, Fomo's always an incredibly uh, uh, subjective man. It's, it's all about your perception and what you perceive as something that's uh, okay to skip on, worth missing out on, or you genuinely don't want to miss out on it. Um, for me, I do have a bit of FOMO in Wuthering Waves, and it's mainly down to just the 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 good design of characters and my enjoyment of the gameplay loop itself and kind of like not wanting to miss out in that regard. But I think there's different scales of FOMO. I don't think the game generates FOMO in the same way that some other games do in a genuine scarcity kind of uh, sense. Now, of course, the banners, premium banners, do have a scarcity to them. But then they, even then, that could be argued, is it really that scarce? Oh, because we're already at reruns, for better or for worse. We're not going to get into the actual, you know, is that a good thing or a bad thing and why are we at that? We're just specifically talking about that. The fact that we are at reruns has kind of reduced that FOMO a little bit, I guess, because um, you're expecting potentials of banners coming back quite quick when you miss out on them. Whether that'll say the same, I don't know. But for me, I do get FOMO with other in waves, but... If it was ran by a different developer, I probably would get a lot more FOMO if the systems were less less generous and designed to make you feel like uh, you're getting the fear of missing it. But let's check this video out anyway then and see what they have got to say then, shall we? I think FOMO is something that a lot of players get scared of when playing gacha games. And I can say that for myself as well. I played on Cal Well, it's in the name, isn't it really though? You know, so it makes sense. I impact third after a three to- Do you know what? I've still yet to play this game. As somebody who really enjoys PGR, and I like Aether Gazer, and PGR was kind of Kuro's, you know, uh, you know, version in a sense. Well, this is what people have told me of Hong Kong Impact 3rd. It was their take on that sort of uh, gacha genre, that gacha game. Uh, I still haven't played it, but I do plan to remedy that soon. We are going to play the game, and I'll let you guys know what I think about it as well. A two to three month break, and uh, realizing that I missed a lot of important events really made me not play the game anymore. So for guns yeah, I, I think as well, when you have a big skip, in, I suppose it depends on how heavy you get back into the game. For me, whenever I have like quite a large break from a gacha game, I do the the, fear, the the FOMO is definitely lessened when you go back, and I think it's because you've realised that it's it's not a major thing for you because you've already missed out on quite a lot, so that fear is kind of gone because you've you've uh you've faced your fear, so to speak, if that makes sense. Um, you know, I never really had the FOMO with Genshin because I started way behind everybody else. I only started in twenty twenty three, so the game was well into its life cycle. Never really had the FOMO for that game. I got it a little bit with uh, Star Rail, but only for select characters. I was happy to miss characters on Star Rail. But I must admit, it's definitely been there for me in uh, Wuthering Waves, for sure. And I feel like potentially in upcoming games, maybe like Neverness to Everness and Azure Premelia, it might be there a little bit more so also. But I think once you've missed the game for a while, for me at least anyway, I think it lessens the FOMO. Uh, I played it for about one month after returning and again, realizing that I missed so much that I couldn't really keep up with the game anymore. And so yeah. I asked myself this question when playing Wuthering Waves, since it's the only gacha game I'm currently playing right now. And it's, it's fun. I think I'm currently there with Star Rail. For me, Star Rail is a have or have not game anyway. But... I feel like I want to go back to Star Rail, but I feel like I've missed out on so much content in the recent months that I just don't know if I've got the desire to try and get back on the horse, if that makes sense, get back on the wagon, whatever you will, get back into it. I'm really present in Wuthering Waves, and if so, how Kuro was able to mitigate it. And so this video is meant to understand if Wuthering Waves truly has FOMO right now, or if it will have in the near future. This video is only meant to spark discussion since this is coming from only my thoughts alone and not okay. really going deep into research. So is FOMO a good thing? You could argue, I guess it is because he drives a, a desire f with the game for you personally, but at the same time, th the fact that if you do miss out does suck. But I think for the company, I think to create a sense of fear of missing out is important. It's a part of business, isn't it? You want to, you want your customers to have the fear of missing out because it drives people to purchase things that they might not necessarily need at times that they really shouldn't. But that's business, isn't it? That's what you want your customers to do. You want to make them think they need your product. 
Please take it with a grain of salt. But anyway, oh, enjoy good. the video. So ever since Weathering Waves came out, I always felt like FOMO is sort of present. What I mean by that is that Weathering Waves, at the end of the day, is a gacha game. And yep. so there has to be some form of FOMO element to it. With new events coming in and out, different kinds of rewards that only players that were able to participate can get. And obviously releasing limited 5-star characters for free, such as Shang Li Yao, can make people feel a little bit guilty for not participating speeding earlier but i think you know what? i still haven't built that dude up fully yet i still haven't built him up and i know a lot of people blow like, what i just i just haven't got around to building him up i really should because i know he's really good boy i just haven't Zero is trying to mitigate that as much as possible and i will give you guys a bunch of reasons as to how career was able okay. to do that and the main reason is that all characters are actually viable this is something that a lot of gacha games sort of suffer from and it's that once a really strong character is past its banner, uh, a lot of newer players feel extremely behind in terms of their account progression compared to older players who started the game at launch. But I think Kuro was able to mitigate that by releasing strong characters each patch, or even having mm -hmm. really mm -hmm. strong uh, characters that are I think just the, the way the combat works in the game as well, because there's such a lot of skill expression, it just allows for more freedom, doesn't it, you know? People who are really good at the game can clear stuff with subpar teams, characters not built up, and even characters are not necessarily the most meta. Of course, you're going to have a little bit more of a difficult time, and there are certain stat checks within the game. That's definitely a thing. But really good players can clear content that other players will just need the, the meta to do, uh, whereas in a lot of other gacha games, that's just not the case, especially in your turn-based games. But I feel like when you're going into more... Uh, nuanced action games. There is definitely a lot more freedom for skill expression to to be the main factor in clearing content, isn't it? Or is hard it? to power creep. Well, it should be, uh, yeah. Let's take an example well, of Verena. I think uh, Verena is the best example of a great anti-FOMO character. Uh, she's the best character in the game by far, being played in literally every single team in the game. But also, she is available in the standard banner where yeah. everyone can be able to access her. Even with the... Yeah, really, everybody should really have a Verena in, the, in their account, to be fair. Um... And she is top tier. Um, I know there's some people who prefer Boiji. You know, some people say, like, you know, uh, Shorekeeper's benched her. And she ha she has kind of been benched for me uh, by Shorekeeper at the moment. But it's just because Shorekeeper's new. I'm enjoying her ult. I'm enjoying the buffs. It's really nice to play with. Verena is always going to be an S tier character, in my opinion. She is just... Uh, She's kind of the goal to the game, in my opinion. The release of Shorekeeper, she was always uh, able to be extremely useful in every situation. I think even more than Shorekeeper in most of the aspects. And I think Kuro has done a great job in doing that, releasing really good characters at the start of the game, which allowed a lot of newer players to get and be able to catch up. In terms of the DPS characters... It's true, the original roster was pretty freaking decent, wasn't it, actually? Well, actually, very good, to be fair. Yeah, he's right on that. Characters, a lot of people can say um, Rover is an extremely great pick that can boost your account significantly. Not only are they F2P, but also FOMO proof where he... Yeah, I just... I, the, the Rover is good. I just I just don't enjoy playing as a Rover, if I'm honest. It's kind of like Tao Chi, you know, another character like that. that I just And it's like Baiji, actually. I understand that Baiji can be really good in what she does, but I just find her a bit cumbersome. And I just don't like playing with that. It's kind of the same thing for me with the Rover. He is almost viable in every element. And obviously the list can go on and on about other characters. But I think the next these two are the best. Uh, because Rover is not only really, really good. But also, again, really easy to access. And really easy to get his dupes. And he does a lot of damage for no reason. But what if you really want these specific limited characters that are no longer available right now? Such as Yinlin, Jian, uh, Changli, or Zhenqi. Well, Rerun are always available in gacha games but don't it doesn't really solve the issue since rerun might not happen until months after release which could prove to be bothersome for some players that's why i think that fomo is still present in the game but you know sort of present since a lot of great characters are always available for you to get but if you want specific characters then it's gonna be harder for you to you know to wait for these characters to come out again the idea of power creep can also be talked about about with FOMO since yeah I think it's just to a lesser extent in this game that the FOMO uh, for me personally where it comes from is just the desire to get the characters because from a content side of things 
the roster that I've got now is perfectly capable of clearing content and I would imagine we're probably good for clearing content for a decent amount of time in the future unless something drastically changes and we do get insane power creep and, and the, the meta shifts within the game, which is entirely possible and probably likely at some point. But uh, for, for me, for the foreseeable future, I feel like I could never pull another character now for the next six months and probably still be more than fine. Where the FOMO comes in for me, it's just great character design and really fun gameplay. And I think that's what Carol do really well. Because if they didn't do that, this game would really not do well at all. Um, just because, like, the, the, the ease to get stuff in the game is, is you know, it, it's really generous in that regard, isn't it? You know what I mean? Um, and and the, the, the quality of the, the characters that you get at the start of the game. You don't need new characters to clear content. It's more of a want, if I'm honest. Um, and, and other games necessitate the need a lot more. So uh, it's kind of a different kind of FOMO for me, personally. These characters might get overshadowed by others, but this can be talked about in another video, or you can speak your thoughts in the comments down below if you want to. The other reason how Kuro is able to mitigate FOMO is through double drop rerun. And this yeah. is something that a lot of gacha games don't do at all for some reason. And I think this is the best way to get players hooked into a gacha game where grinding for resources is essential and where they can't fear on missing out on big rewards. Basically, Basically, Kuro, uh, what Kuro does is in every phase of an update, they release a double drop event where players can just grind for their needed resources and get double drops out of it. As of right now, there isn't any exclusive resource like crowns and Genshin where you need to participate in a specific event to boost your characters even more, which is great. But releasing double drops event in every patch is the best way to deal with FOMO in gacha games in my opinion. And I think Kuro is doing a great job about it. Not only it can help return and play players catch up to their grind, but also give newer players an edge to be able to complete and level up their favorite characters so they can catch true, up to true. everything that Kuro has offered them. Yeah, one thing I'll say as well, I think uh, Wuthering Waves gives a really good new player experience in regards to getting where you want to be. And I think it's probably at the best point it's ever been now. You know, if you're coming in as a new player, you've got so much content to get through. You've got so many ways to level your roster up and like power through stuff. Um, it, they do a really good job of that actually. In this patch. I think this amount of consideration that this gacha game company gives is crazy and should be addressed since, you know, a lot of people don't give it as much credit. Not only that, but they also give out something called Weathering Exploration, where they grant players really high rewards by doing very easy tasks, like finishing yeah. your dailies or baiting farmable. What was it now, the, the total for this? Was it like something like, was it like 2 million in total, the shell credits? Ridiculous amount. I think it was, wasn't it? Looking at it. Yeah, around about 2 awesome. million. I was able to finish this and managed to get Whispering Chorus so I can level up my characters. I was actually about to run out since I haven't had the time to explore and fight mobs around the area and so the fact that Kuro did that yeah, I need to do really some me. Again, I really this do. shows that even though FOMO is still a thing in gacha games, Kuro really tries to lower it as much as possible as they can make sure their players, new or old, can be able to experience the game to its I think as well, the plan is for Kuro is to, to try and allow the gameplay and the characters to create the FOMO. That's what it feels like anyway. I could be totally wrong, but I feel like they're trying to potentially play the long game with Wuthering Waves is to, to get people in with the, 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 not so much the promise, but the idea that there's, there's plenty to be had here. You've got a good selection of original characters that are going to be able to clear majority of the stuff in the game, if not all, well, all of the stuff in the game. You're going to be able to definitely get yourself some uh, premium characters off the bat as well when you first start the game. And if you're playing the game semi-regularly, you're going to be able to hit banners here and there as well and get yourself premium five stars as well as copies of your four stars and obviously new four stars that are coming soon. Um... So, yeah, I, I think I feel like they're going to pull people in like that. And then maybe things will switch up a little bit later where genuine FOMO will come in a little bit more. Um, but it's how they've got to be careful if they do bait and switch us in that regard. It's got to be really gently and it's got the needles. The needle's got to move on ever so slightly over a period of time, hasn't it? Because if they, if they try and pull it too quick, people are going to get pissed and rightfully so. Um, but I do, I think they're playing the long game in that sense to try and bring people in with quality and hope that they'll stick around and then 
you know, those people turn into having the fear of missing out because they've got an attachment to the game rather than just the, oh, I've, I've got to get this, otherwise I'm not going to be able to clear the content or I'm going to be dropping out the meta, so to speak. I definitely feel like that is kind of lacking in Wuthering Waves. Now, that probably will change over time, you know, metas change and all that sort of stuff, and it probably will be a game of you're definitely going to need the haves or you're going to want to be in the haves rather than the have-nots. But I feel at the moment you can totally be in the have-nots in this game and still clear the content as long as you practice at the game and you've got decent skill expression, you'll be fine. Fullest and, catch, and a lot of gacha games don't have that, do they? They just don't. The crew was able to offer. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Uh, if you find it relatable or um, you know you liked it or you enjoyed it, let me know in the comments down below and leave a like and subscribe if you obviously enjoyed. Uh, one more thing that I wanted to note is that this week is going to be really, really... Uh, there's going to be a lot of things that I needed to do for university and so there might not be as much videos as before, but obviously this might be wrong because because I really like doing videos, so uh, if 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 that yeah, your priority is right, bro. <laughs> He's gonna be like that. Actually, we was first this week. We was coming first. That would not happen. Then uh, yeah, I'm gonna keep uploading videos like usual. But there might be a chance where I might miss like a like a day or or something like that. But that, that's pretty much it. So it's a small announcement. All right. Okay. Yeah. Um, is FOMO really present in Wuthering Waves? Personally, for me, yes. But I think if I looked at it from maybe a more objective point of view which i think is kind of impossible to do but i'm going to try and do it anyway i don't think so much of course it's a gacha game there's always going to be fomo um but as i said with the characters you get from the start of the game and what you'll be able to get from just playing through the main story in terms of your selectors and all that sort of stuff at the start you're going to have a roster that's more than capable of clearing everything in the game and if you're playing it regularly, you're going to get enough asteroids to pull on premium banners here and there. Obviously, not every one because you're free to play. Um, and you're going to be able to get a decent amount of premium characters as well. So in regards to clearance and uh, meta and in that regard, I don't think there's much FOMO in this game at all. Where the FOMO comes from me is quality in terms of character designs, how fun they are. And just uh, and, 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 and enjoyment. I think that's where the FOMO comes in Wuthering Waves. And for me, that's the right kind of FOMO. It might not be the most profitable FOMO. Uh, because obviously, if you can't clear something, people are probably more than likely to open the wallet. So like, well, I'm just going to have to get this so I can get past this. Where you don't really have that so much in this game. Um, and other games do. Or I feel like it's the right one because it feels more satisfying because it's like, I really want to get that character and there's more enjoyment in it for me rather than you get cock blocked, you get you get stat checked, you're getting DPS checked and it's like, right, I just don't have the right meta here. But if I have this character, I'm going to be able to clear these really easy. Um, and it doesn't have that and I'm glad. Will it, will it always be the same? We don't know. But yeah, it does have FOMO. But I think in a different way. Let me know what you think. It does it Wuthering Waves have FOMO? Do you see it as a slightly different kind of FOMO to other games? Or is it just your standard gacha stuff? Let me know.